Hello, welcome to this virtual site tour of the Interdisciplinary Biomedical Research Building. Easy for me to say. You can see it stood proud behind me and I'm going to take you through the journey of how we got to where we are today. I'm Nick Preedy, I'm Construction Manager and I've worked for Wilmot Dixon for around 11 years. So the IBRB project is in week 89 now, so we're only about 12 weeks to go till completion. So you can see in the background, final touches, final preparations around the groundworks are taking place. But doesn't it look stunning with, the, with its precast concrete and unitized glazing behind? So the IBRB journey is all about how much can we build off-site, in factories, pre-manufactured to higher quality levels, bring to site, bolt together in component form, to reduce the amount of people on site, to reduce the risk of all the health and safety hazards that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and then throw in the COVID pandemic as well. So in March, when COVID became a big part of our lives and a big part of the work that goes on in construction, we were at the stage where the frame was finished and the precast cladding that you can see in the background was just started to be bolted on. So this route of using pre-manufactured architectural finish pre-cast concrete cladding panels. We also introduced the windows being fitted into the factory off-site as well. So this was a huge help when the very unknowns were about and we didn't really know how to deal with the COVID impact back in March. So COVID hit us hard in March, April, May. We really did identify the hazards. We tried to adapt through those months and in the July, August and September periods, I feel as if we really are striving now in ways that we've adapted, changed our work practices to create this com COVID compliant atmosphere and environment for people to work in. So what I want to do now is I want to take you inside. So come with me, let's have a look around the site, build up all your questions and I look forward to answering them at the end. main entrance to the building now so you come in through here aluminium doors entrance area here and you're confronted with this lovely environment of exhibition space and waiting area for the lecture theatre over my shoulder here you can see the staircase and the, uh, the the atrium that jumps across the floor levels so you've got levels one two and three of all the laboratory space users of the building will work their way up this timber stairs lovely timber stairs with LED lights all in the handrails through some speed gates and that's their access control points for the building as part of this whole space, the design team from very early stages, stage two, stage three, wanted to try and make this a very social space. And not many social spaces are part of the Gibbet Hill campus, so including a cafe, an exhibition space, a social breakout space from the lecture theatre, and also this lovely seating area. A huge challenge in this lower ground floor space is the cafe and the lecture theatre. So this is the cafe. Big challenge in here is this huge amount of concrete exposed uh, finished walls. So these walls weigh in the region of 20 to 22 tonnes each in piece. 4.2 metres wide, came on an uh, Arctic lorry from um, Bison, from Derby. Horizontal, turned on site back into vertical, tower crane lifted into place. The size, the complexity and the sort of risk involved with that, but it was only a three-man uh, installation team. So for all of this work here, originally which was an in-situ design, we challenged the design, said we could do this precast all off-site as part of the off-site strategy. Comes in four or five of these panels per day and personally I'm not sure how we would have ever got this type of level of quality uh, if we'd done it in situ on site. So this space is nine meters high, full of acoustic uh, baffles to absorb the, the bouncing of noise off the, off the hard surfaces. Uh, the ca cafe user will then have tables and chairs in here, as you can see behind me, the glazing, adding more verticality to the glazing to try and get the solar, gla uh, solar gain. So the, the sort of tree-shaped um, fritting to the glass behind needed to block out 40% of the clear glass in order to meet the solar gains and the, and the G value of the glass. So that verticality again and the, and the trees from behind looking through is bringing the outside in to the building and creating this lovely cafe space for people to use. Okay, so we're in the, uh, the write-up space to the IBRB building. Uh, the write-up space is essentially a timber frame glulam CLT 
combination of products that were brought in uh, from Austria, some European spruce. Uh, we brought this in earlier on in 2020 and this connects to the concrete frame as you can see to the, to the side of me where we've tried to mimic some concrete effect um, in timber so it's, it's, it's a bit of a bespoke finish for this project where we're trying to keep the timber theme in this area following through to a structural concrete uh, core walls so the, the tying in of the timber frame to the concrete frame was a very tricky design element um, very early on so getting our PCE who did the uh, precast frame and VHAG who did the timber frame to come together come up with a solution and uh, just above, above me now you can see a very neat connection detail where there's some casting plates where the timber beams connect into the concrete frame. So one of the big challenges here was the amount of uh, movement in the timber frame compared to the small amount of movement in the precast concrete frame. So that's a bit of a challenge to come, come about. And again, sort of collaborative design meetings and, and some real good energy with our um, supply chain partners and design partners created this really neat effect, uh, albeit very bespoke and very challenging, uh, which, which, which gives us the product you can see behind me. So we're at the stage now where the raised access floor has gone in, so I'm stood on a 400 to 500 mil floor void, um, full of ventilation, supply ventilation, um, electric buzz bar for the small power, lots of data. And behind me, there'll be rows and rows and rows of uh, open plan desking, all of the end users of the building to do all their writing up of experiments and all the scientific writing up that goes along with the, with the sort of scientific works going on in the building. So this area, the final things to do in here now, uh, we've, you can see some glazed screens going in and behind me, so try to get this area clean. So we've done the builders clean in this area now. The dust levels have dropped. So items such as glazing the meeting pods uh, is, is happening. Um, we're a few months away from practical completion now. So we've got booked in in October. The carpet tiles starting to go down. You can see the hangers behind me as well, we're hanging down there for the acoustic baffles. So we've got quite a high amount of absorption needed for the acoustic strategy of the building. So you can see the, the black light fittings, uh, the, which integrates all of the services behind. And then the black uh, acoustic panels will really make this ceiling soffit space really quite special. So we're in the laboratory space now at IBRB. Uh, this area is predominantly across the building, category level two laboratory space, um, clean environment and lots of hygiene and sort of wipe down space um, sort of strategy from the design point of view. Um, you can see the islands of desking behind me. Uh, the, the desking, even with COVID, we've had to review the spacings between um, sort of workstations for the end user. So each station would have been circa a metre apart. They've actually been widened out now to prevent people working closely together. And you can see now that the, the sort of work uh, gaps between each area is, is, is around the one and a half to two metres each. So it's, it's even COVID has taken an impact on the design and the installation of the laboratory space to make sure that the end users, when they use this space, are fully compliant with the, with the world that we seem to live in now. Um, this area is a huge uh, challenge in terms of the MEP design. So above me and around me, you can just see lots and lots of uh, services in, in the ceiling void above. So the ceiling void is approximately 1,200 millimetres in depth. So it's a hell of a space in terms of capacity and density of services in such a small space. Um, we work with NG Baileys on this project. And from the very start of the project, with this sort of ethos and, and strategy towards this project, we really did look at how much could be built off-site and brought to, uh, brought to Coventry, to Warwick, um, to be basically brought in, all finished, all manufactured,
quality checked off site, so the quality levels go up higher. Uh, and then we just got a team in, a lift and shift crew, and they just pin them to the ceiling, to the, to the soffits. Um, so you can see above me and around me, lots of M&E. You'll see the Unistrup frames as well. So the Unistrup frames are anywhere between four meters and six meters in length. This depended on the sort of turning ratio, the turning corners to get them into position. So a lot of um, spatial awareness and, and design to do with how we actually get the product into the building took place. And these services, on, on each floor plate, there's around 30 to 35 horizontal modules that came in. Like I say, lots of work done off-site in their factory in Bradford. Uh, and it all came in, and minimal amount of people therefore needed to simply connect them up rather than having to do the actual install on site. So with the COVID impact, we've had some delays. We've, you know, I think the whole industry has had delays. But from an from a installation point of view and numbers of bodies on site, we can manage to keep this as a minimal and create safe, compliant working strategies by having this off-site manufacture. And you can see it, it's a three-man team to install a uh, module to the ceiling, whereas it would be something like four or five different trades all working on here a week after each other. So the numbers of people on site has gone down and the amount of working together in close proximity has, has been reduced drastically. Okay, so one of the main features of the lab areas was making sure that this aisleway between the two working spaces was kept clear. So you can see all of the maintainable items are straight above my head. Everything above the desks, we made sure that there's nothing that the maintenance and operating teams need to get to to change valves, to maintain valves, to get to fan core units. So this whole design worked around the fact that the end users in the estates department from Warwick University could get up and maintain, operate without having to affect the daily use and, and the important scientific experience that were going on these, on these desks around us. So embarking on the journey of off-site manufacture and the whole programme strategy, um, it's quite amazing the fact that September 2019, we put the first element of precast frame up. So we stood the first column. Um, and now just over 12 months later, so in, in 12 months, we've managed to go from no frame and a bit of a basement in situ works to a completed frame, a completed timber frame as well, fully clad, Roof on, m &E works first, second, and now on the final fix. Um, we've also started the testing commissioning phase, so the pre-commissioning, so fan core units are going in. They're actually activated. So we've got two air handling units um, activated as well. So we've got air being pumped into the building. Uh, we've cleaned two floors. It's, it's quite remarkable that the off-site manufacture strategy of bringing everything in from factories, using a big tower crane to assemble to component form products has, has meant that within 12 months we've gone from no frame to almost a complete building, which, which really does show the benefits of off-site manufacture. And also that just sort of it's de-risking the project. So it gives this perfect or, or best case scenario, 12 to 14 weeks testing and commissioning phase for a scientific laboratory type building, which is exactly what this type of, type of building deserves to make sure that when we hand it over to our customer, uh, around Christmas time, that they've got a product they can walk into. We know it works. We've proved it works, and, and it's just it's just right for the it's right for the um, end users first time, and and hopefully, we'll join them as part of their soft landings journey for 12 to 18 months. We'll be using our energy synergy model, so that's an in-house Wilmot Dixon um, process whereby we work with the universities sustainability and energy uh, manager. We assess the building at design stage. We then develop the metering strategy, the, the seasonal commissioning, the health checks with our customer care, aftercare team. So the whole process doesn't just stop at practical completion around Christmas. We're part of this journey with the end users, with the customer, University of Warwick, right the way through for 12 to 18 months.
So we're right in the centre of the roof now. So this plant space was uh, originally covered with another lightweight uh, steel roof to protect all of the plant inside. As part of challenging the design at the very early stages from stage three to stage four, we decided to take that roof off and then weatherproof all of the, or upgrade all of the kit on the roof to be weatherproof. This has several benefits in the fact that the university, when they want to change items or add items or maintain or upgrade items on the roof, they haven't now got a, an obstruction of another roof to go through. So the open roof strategy has also helped with another strategy, which is then to completely clad all of this area in with rather than just a normal four or five metre high plant screen of some sort of aluminium cladding normally, we've actually chosen to really develop the sustainability strategy on site. You can see behind me over this side, the, the, the rear of the PV panel screen. So rather than a black plant screen, we've actually thought, actually, why not use PV panels in a vertical plane on all four sides? So taking, using the capital uh, allowances for the plant screen, we've upgraded, we've worked with NG Baileys, a bit of a collaborative effort to help the university and we've added around 600 PV panels to really boost the amount of renewable energy that the building is producing that throws back into their campus-wide huge energy usage model and really helps sort of just just moves their energy usage that one little bit to more, more towards renewable energy. Okay, so we're at the final stages of the roof installation now. These frames that I'm walking underneath were part of our access strategy for the university going forward in the fact that they can get to everything, they can maintain everything, they can add cabling, they can get to all their pipe work. And this whole philosophy of off-site manufacture, NG Bailey's and their Bradford-based off-site manufacturing facility can produce these galvanised steel frames as a land-on unit, lifted them up with a tower crane, landed them down, and then we've only got four or five operatives working on a circa 800 square metre roof, working in the, in the COVID compliant way that we're trying to achieve in the last few months and has meant that these frames have been fitted out, finished in a matter of weeks rather than a matter of months with fewer people, fewer hours and less risk to the, to the pandemic that we're currently working through. So we're up on the timber frame roof elements of the project. This is the lightweight structure. So this is the PV panels, uh, four rows of them in the horizontal plane, as we all know, and, and we've, we've got plenty of these projects uh, nationally and, and around the world that we know horizontal PV panels work. We've also ele added this element of vertical PV panels behind me, where we had a black plant screen originally as part of the stage three design. And what we've done, and we've challenged the designers, we've challenged our PV specialist to say actually can we make vertical PV panels efficient in the plane they're on and facing south, east, west and north. So believe it or not, these south facing ones that we're stood behind now uh, are about 80% efficient. So that's, that's really come on as, as a product and been developed over the last five to 10 years. We've actually got these PV panels on all four sides of the plant screen. And believe it or not, the north facing vertical PV panels are around 60 to 70% efficient. So we've gone from product where it was just going to be aluminium, um, black cladding, cloaking in all the plants as a plant screen, to now adding in nearly 600 PV panels, which is just adding to the renewable energy source on this project and helping the customer in their drive to add and reduce um, the carbon footprint of, the, of their campus. Okay, so we're inside the package plant room now on the roof. Uh, this plant room is part of the key strategy towards the off-site development and off-site manufacture. So again, NG Baileys and their off-site uh, facility in Bradford have produced this in a factory environment. You can see the amount of work that's gone into here with the 3D modelling, the Revit modelling, the clash detection. The amount of services in here and the amount of products and kit in here to be able to get everything out. We've proved that the access and maintenance and replacement strategy is in place and all of that's been done knowing we can build that in a factory away from site 
So the plant room really has de-risked the programme and this amount of work, we would have said between 10 and 12 weeks on site with several bodies, several operatives doing this work and this got landed in one day, all been done off site and it really does nail the strategy of off site manufacture and its benefits. Okay, so one of the big challenges uh, of the project was the basement excavation and the contiguous piled reinforced wall behind me to my right hand side. So this wall was put in at a very early stage um, and we've been real keeping a good eye on this wall because the waterproofing strategy going on the outside of the wall down and underneath the slab, hence the reason why we've got these boards removed. We're leaving these boards off right till the end so we're 100% sure there's definitely no water penetration coming in through this five metre high below ground wall. So we're in the 400 seater lecture theatre now. So this space, again down in the lower ground floor connected to the main entrance uh, atrium area, will home about 400 or 410 seats with this amphitheatre type design all leading towards the front projection uh, screen. The area is split into two areas, so smaller um, works can happen, smaller presentations, smaller seminars. Uh, you can see the stage right now, the joiners are all busy working, getting the uh, tiering ready. Next month we then get the final seats, a company called Audience Systems bringing all the seats for us, carpeting the area, and you can see around us lots of lovely timber um, acoustic treatment to make this space a real quiet and still space when people are presenting and people are working in this area. So thank you for joining me on this virtual tour. It's certainly been very enjoyable myself to try and put this together. I've tried to include as many facts, figures, data and experiences on site as, as, as I can. Uh, and I look forward to uh, answering some questions shortly. Mm -hmm.